Hello, welcome to uh, Go Math Lesson 1 1, Mr. Wolf Sligel's World. Uh, so, we're going to be going over just some basic division ideas uh, that we've looked at previously and some new ways to kind of work with remainders. So, let's start with a word problem. When you watch a cartoon, the frames of the film seem to blend together to form a moving image. A cartoon lasting just 92 seconds requires 2,208 frames. So, how many frames did you see each second when you watched a cartoon? When you see that, how many per? That's usually a division problem. That means we're gonna take some number, we're gonna break it up into even pieces. In this case, we're taking the 2,208 and breaking it up into 92. The first step that we like you to take is to estimate. And the reason that we estimate is so that we have some idea that we're in the ballpark. This is a really easy way to check for decimal placement, uh, which is one of the most common things that people make mistakes on. So if we're dividing 2,208 by 92, what are some numbers that are relatively close to that that we could use just to do a little mental division? So let's start with, um, if we would take these and we'd say 2,200. And we're gonna divide that easily by 92, that's pretty close to 100. And when I divide those two, whether I have a calculator or I can do it in my head, I know what I'm dividing by a multiple of 10, I can just check some zeros here. What I end up with is 22. So my answer should be somewhere in the ballpark of 22. So if I end up with something that's in the 2000s or even the 200s, I know that I probably messed up my decimal there somewhere. All right, so at this point, let's erase that. We're gonna put 22 just as a little mental reminder up there. And then we're actually going to divide. So I'm gonna take 2,208 and I'm gonna divide by 92. Now, in my head right now, it's not screaming that this is probably gonna come out evenly, but I could be wrong. So 92 goes into 220, two times. And what I end up with is 92 times two. Just to check my work here a little bit, I get four and 18, 184. I put 184 down here, and this should be reviewed for most of you, but we're gonna go through it anyway and I subtract. 36, now I check my work knowing that this number is smaller than this number because otherwise I have one more time that I can take it out. So I know that 36 is smaller than 92. So now I wanna take the next number and bring it down. How many times will 92 go into 368? Hmm. Well, I don't know that offhand because I'm sure that you don't know your multiples of 92 either, but I do know that if I look at the first couple numbers, nine and 36, nine times four is 36, so let's see what that does. So I come up here and I get four. Let's check our work. We have 92 times four. Four times two is eight. Four times nine is 36. 368, and I found it. Come down here and I'm gonna write it just to show myself that I'm done completely. What I end up with is the number 24, as my answer, I have it right up here. Now, if I go back just to check my work to see if I, I made any mistakes anywhere, what was my original estimation? It was 22, is 24 somewhere in the ballpark of 22? Yeah, so I know that that's probably correct. Now, what would happen if I had a remainder? In the past, you've put just an R, like remainder one. Basically, you get to a point where you can't take any more whole numbers out, and so you just say, well, I have this many left over. It's a remainder. We're not gonna do that this year. We're gonna focus on taking that remainder and we're gonna make it into a fraction. So if I were to erase this and let's just start over. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick a number and let's say 27 divided by eight. Okay, so I know that the multiples of eight and 27 is not one of them. So how many times will eight go into 27? Well, eight times three is 24. I bring down my 24, and I show that I took eight three times. So I take those 24 away, and when I subtract, I'm left with three, obviously less than eight. Well, I have two options here. Number one, I can put a decimal in and a zero, and then keep going. That's one option, and that's one that we're gonna use quite often. The other thing that I can do, rather than put my decimal in, is take my three and show that I still have three, but it's still divided, by that eight over there. 
So I put that 3 over 8. Every fraction is a division problem. So by putting that 3 eighths in there, I can show that that is the correct answer. I have 3 whole and 3 out of 8, or 3 still divided by 8, left over. So it's not going to have a remainder. Anyway, um, basic division, estimation is a great way first. Uh, so you can check your work to make sure you're not making any decimal errors. And then work the problem through. When you get to the end, look at the directions and see, did it ask me to show my remainder or any remainder as a remainder? Did it ask me to show it as a fraction or did it ask me to show it as a decimal? And we're going to talk a little bit more about that 